Okay, let's look at two dimensions now, Fourier transforms in two dimensions. Um, the continuous version, basically we just integrate over x and y instead of just x, otherwise it's uh, identical. Then the discrete version, we use the, the summation instead of the integrals. So here now we have two frequency components, u and v. So we can think of this as a vector has both spatial frequency and direction. And again, um, the point at u equals 0, v equals 0 is just the sum of all the values. The Fourier transform is a linear operation. If you just um, look at what you would get if you multiplied the inputs by a constant and added them, uh, you simply get back the transforms multiplied by that constant and added. So it's a, a linear operation. Let's look at an example using MATLAB. So MATLAB has a two-dimensional Fourier transform function called FFT2 and the inverse version IFF2. So I'll go ahead and read in um, this image. Um, So this image here, um, we're going to want to work with uh, type double. So I'm going to convert this to type double instead of integer. Um, then Fourier transform, which is FFT2, and I'll put that into a value called F. So as you can see, um, the original image is real the output transform is of type complex, both of the same two-dimensional size though. So um, we can't um, show a complex image, we have to convert it to real. So um, MATLAB has a function called ABS, taking the absolute value. So if I do that, I get a, almost a blank image and the reason is that uh, a couple reasons um, the first reason is that the DC component is so much larger than all the other values that it kind of swamps them out the DC value is actually up here in the upper um, left corner if I just zoom in on that you can see it sitting right there um, so two things we want to um, move that to the middle of the image and we want to enhance the low values just for visualization um, by taking a log function. So I'll do this again but I'll show first I'll, I'll shift it to the middle using FFT shift so that just moves everything to the middle um, and then I'll take uh, the absolute value and then the log of that. So that enhances the low values. So now we can see the DC, that high value, is directly in the middle of this transform. Um, and then the value, the, then the, we can also see some um, values outside the middle here. So again, the middle represents zero frequency. As we move outward from the middle, we move to higher and higher frequencies. Here's an example of another image um, and its transform. So a couple of things to note on these things. Um, one is that if you have a sharp um, edge in the image, like the edges of this thing here, those lead to high spatial frequencies. So this edge, for example, uh, produces all of this, all of these values in this direction and this direction. And the reason is that, you know, if you think back to the Fourier series of sines and cosines, um, to represent a, um, a sharp transition like a sawtooth or a step edge takes a lot of high frequency sines and cosines. So that's, that's what these are up here. Similarly, like uh, these edges would represent these would yield high frequency sines and cosines um, along this, this dimension here. 
Just some other examples. Um, here is a set of textures that have been used quite widely for um, image processing experiments. I have a couple of them loaded as you've seen here. So let me load in um, Let's see, how about that one? Okay, that's this one here. Um, I'll do the same operations I did before, namely convert it to double, take the Fourier transform of that, and then display uh, the transform. So you can see a very periodic pattern that represents the periodicity of this uh, spatial image horizontally, vertically, and diagonally. Um, and the other the other functions, uh, you know, this this guy here would produce um, high spatial frequencies uh, horizontally and vertically, but not diagonally. Um, some properties of the discrete Fourier transform. One is, um, as we kind of have seen already, that the spectra look very uh, symmetrical. And that comes from the fact that uh, a real function, f of xy, yields a transform that is symmetrical. The complex conjugate um, is symmetrical. So this is the complex conjugate of f at uv that's equal to f at minus u minus v. So of course, when you take the absolute value, they're equal. And this is the proof of that. This shows a complete table of these symmetry properties. Uh, the one we just looked at was right here.